Hello everyone, and welcome to our first major project, the Symmetry Project, aka Vases and Faces. When you look at this image, what do you see? What's the first thing that your eye is drawn to? Do you see the white space or the black space? Do you see a face or a vase? How about now? This outside white space or the face shape is known as the negative space or the background space. The central object, okay, or the vase in this particular situation is the positive space. These kinds of designs are known as Rubin designs. We're going to be creating a Rubin designed symmetry project as our first major assignment in this class. In this assignment, I'm going to be looking for the following things, creativity, symmetry, balance, and pencil technique. You are expected to create original designs which use detail and look like you put forth time and effort into their creation. I'm going to be focusing on the symmetry. You're going to use a ruler and lines to create that to uh, help guide the symmetry. All aspect, aspects of our designs should be symmetrical. This is the part that will train you to look at the, your object like an artist, comparing one side to the other and really taking the time to look. I'm also going to focus on balance, creating and considering a whole drawing, not just focusing on one part, but the whole object. And finally, pencil technique. Over the past week, we have learned a variety of different mark making techniques, as well as how to control both stroke frequency and pressure. You are expected to incorporate two or three of these techniques into your sketch. Remember, the pencil techniques are hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, scumbling, and blending. I expect you to use both consistent shading as well as excellent technique. Now we're going to look at a couple of ways for you to approach this project. Remember, creativity is key. Here are a couple ways that you can come up with some creative ideas. Notice these two designs. These artists accentuated certain facial features, such as the chin or the mouth. I especially like the design on the right because it shows excellent balance. Notice how they didn't, notice how there isn't too much white space or too much shaded space. You can add details, both interior or exterior. Notice how this artist used a variety of pencils to create shade in the hair. The artist on the right added details like hair, lip ring, and nose rings. Again, as long as all your details are symmetrical, you can add as many as you so choose. If you decide to use a simpler design, I suggest increasing the creativity by demonstrating gradient shading. Gradient shading counts as two techniques. Okay, you can do the gradient shading top to bottom, inside to outside, outside to inside. But again, gradient shading is what we will use most in this class. So therefore, it will count as two techniques. This is my grumpy cat example. This example isn't too bad. It has some strengths and weaknesses. Some strengths are a creative design, um, as well as well-executed technique. I see the cross hatching, but notice I only see one technique. The goal is to demonstrate two. Also, once you really take a look at the symmetry, you'll start to see those symmetrical inaccuracies. Start with your eye at the top of the drawing and work your way down, slowly comparing the two. Do you see the indiscrepancies? I notice some in the hair, in the nose, in the chin, in the neck, once you really start to look, they jump out. Remember, it's minus one point per symmetrical inaccuracy. Also, the balance is just a little bit off. Notice how there's very little white space and a lot of shading. This does not demonstrate good balance. This artist just made more work for themselves. By, give, by requiring them to shade the inside, they have all of the space to shade. If they had better balance, less work. You don't necessarily need to do a face. You could do a thematic design. Spooky season's coming up. 
This design may not be perfectly symmetrical, but I love the creativity and the ambition. Those antlers were pretty tough to do. This is the kind of example I would reward extra credit for creativity and design to compensate for the lack of symmetry. Don't be afraid to try ambitious ideas. I really love seeing new and creative ways to interpret this project. And finally, consider having the two objects interact with each other in some way. Thinking, think of them as two things instead of one overall design. And finally, you can do abstraction. These, the objects you sketch don't have to be something that exists in reality. It could be a design, like an abstract design or a mandala. Again, as long as it's symmetrical, it fits the requirements for this project. Our first step will be coming up with four thumbnails. If you remember, thumbnails are small miniature sketches. In these sketches, I want you to practice for, again, four original, creative, symmetrical designs, which utilize different types of shading. Each design should look like care and thought was put into it, as well as demonstrating that you understand the requirements for this project. Don't forget to include your name on your thumbnail designs. Once complete, please photograph and add to your Google submission slide. I look, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I look forward to seeing all of your creative ideas.